Hi, I'm Brian. Welcome to Our Toga Fool. We are here in Beijing, China. That, in case you don't know, is a city of 22 million people. That makes it the largest capital city by population in the world. Why on earth are we here for the launch of this car? Well, Volkswagen are making a very big statement about their future. One in every two cars that they currently sell is sold within the Chinese market. And that's really very significant. And this is a growth market. We're talking about a market in which I think it's 60% of all of its customers are first time buyers. And the average age of a customer is 35. That's radically different from Europe. And because of that, it's very important for Volkswagen to present a young, innovative, fresh brand. Because of that, they are launching their first ever world premiere here in Beijing with the brand new Touareg. Now, I know you've already had the opportunity to take a brief look at that with Thomas. Hopefully tonight we're gonna to be going into a little bit more detail, show you all the extra features that you're wondering about, and I hope that you're gonna enjoy it as much as we are. So, stay tuned and let's take a closer look. So for our regular viewers, you may be more than a little familiar with this grill. If you watched our Artian review, you will know that at that stage, Volkswagen announced that they were really looking to restyle their entire lineup and that that was going to be the signature for things moving forwards. And I'm very happy to say that's exactly what I'm looking at right here. These large horizontal bars are very reminiscent of the Artian, the slightly dropped down bonnet in front. It still presents a front that's aggressive, but in keeping with the style that they wanted to project right throughout their lineup. Now, depending on how you felt about the previous iteration of this model, for me, it was a little too round. I'm a fan of angularity. That doesn't necessarily work for everybody. So I like to see those sharper lines coming in. And I really like to see the way that this car has embraced that styling. It's very much in keeping with the Arteon, but bigger, bolder, more aggressive. These horizontal lines right across the front and right through into the lights really do make a statement. Now, okay, that's not gonna to be to everybody's taste, but for me, it looks kind of like the future, and I like it. Coming through into the flank, we really, really get a sense of that styling change. Look at the carve of this line across the bonnet. That goes straight towards the shoulder line of the car, and this character line, that runs the entire length of the body and right round, nicely integrated into the lights here. Now, as I said before, the previous design was a lot more bulbous and rounded than this. This is all about angularity. I appreciate that's not for everybody. It works for me. This is Volkswagen's premium SUV, and as such, it really needs to make a statement on the road. Now, this is the R-Line, and Thomas had a look at the R-Line previously, so I'm not able to show you how this impacts in a, a slightly lower trim level, sadly. But what I can say is that for me, it's very stylish. It really is making a statement on the road. It speaks of both power and speed. And look at the way this, for example, petrol cap has been cut in to just give you that accentuated detail right through the side. Look at these enormous wheels that we have fitted. If you're going to launch a brand new car and you're going to state that it is going to be a competitor within the higher vehicle class segments, you need to make a statement. And for me, this car does. Now, let's take a look around at the back and see how that stylings follow through. Well, I already mentioned these lights that wrap straight into the back. And for me, that really helps break up the rear of this car. I think the rear of this car is gonna be a bit of an opinion divider you can't design an SUV of this size without it looking slightly bulbous somewhere. 
And for me, it's a little bit full in the caboose, if you know what I mean. There's, there's that roundness back again, which sits in contrast with the angularity of the design up here. I don't really know that there's a lot they could have done to have changed that. They've tried to address it with the angularity back here up at the top. You can't get away from it. This is a large car, and so it has a large back. Yeah, it's not my favorite part of the car, but I think it looks fine. What do you think? Now we've already had a quick chance to have a look inside with Thomas. We're going to look in a little bit more detail now. So we already know that this car is a very significant pitch at the upper segment for SUVs. So let's see if the interior delivers on that promise. Well, I think you would have to agree that at first glance, everything in the R-Line at least spells out premium. Now, I think the styling at first glance is very nice. And the experience of getting into the car is nice too. I say nice, as you know, at Altogafuel, we're not such a fan of leather seats, but they are still quite popular. So I'm gonna suggest that Michelle comes around to the passenger side so we can have a look a little bit closer at the driver's experience. So the most important feature of this car in terms of its ability to play in the upper section of SUVs is how it presents itself. Is it stylish enough? Is it nice enough looking to be able to compete in that market? Well, for my money, it absolutely is. Look at the attention to detail. We have soft touch plastic on top, but this inclusion of this nice stitching line really makes it feel a little bit more premium. The angularity of the air vents here, the way the speaker is shaped into the dashboard, all of those things just make it feel a little bit more intentional. And when your gaze drops slightly lower, to the display, that's where the fun really begins. Now, we have a 15 inch infotainment screen across here and a 12 inch driver display. So I'm gonna turn it on so we can take a closer look at that. Now, very important in the design of this car is the way that the technology has been integrated into the car itself, which is to say, Volkswagen very much want you to be able to customize this car in every respect to make it your own, but they do not want you to be distracted by that. Because of that, we have up here, unfortunately, Michelle can't show you, it won't focus in this light, but we have a newly designed head-up display that will give you more information and reduce your need to be distracted by looking down here at the various controls. Over time, the more you interact with the car, the more you program it, the more you make it right for you, the more the system will reward you. Needless to say, there are an extraordinary range of options, but, Volkswagen say that the layout is intuitive and easier to navigate. To give you an example of that, let's take a look at this infotainment system. This screen looks very familiar to anyone who's used to dealing with an iPad or a phone. If we look down here, we can see we've got three dots that intuitively, you're going to know that they're there. When you get used to the system, and it's natural to scroll between the selections, if we actually hit on a box like this, we go straight into the menu. And if we want to select something different, Michelle is going to tell me because he's already done it. What's, what's the magic gesture, Michelle? Just press on one of the boxes for a longer time. Okay. And look at that. We get the main menu back up so we can see what we want to select from. That is much more natural. Given the range of features and options that are available to select on this car, it could be incredibly overwhelming. And they've done a really nice job of not only integrating that into the dash so it doesn't stand out and really offend you while you're looking at it, but at the same time, it provides you with an extraordinary amount of different features that you can select. So coming slightly further down the design of the center console, we have the air vents here a nice discrete storage area here. This is inductive charging for a phone, and by the look of it, I would say that's big enough for an iPhone Plus, so you should have more than enough space there. We have a USB integration point here, obviously for connecting your car up to your phone, and we have a 12 volt charge point here. Now, standard gripe, don't mind the piano black higher up, but why oh why is it here i don't know because as you can probably see straight away if michelle has a look this car is being cleaned to within an inch of its life every 10 seconds and still we have greasy fingerprints here already so not my taste but okay that's the style at the moment 
So a nice discreet automatic gearbox here. Slightly further down, we have our mode selector. Volkswagen very enthusiastic to point out to us that this car is designed and built to be driven off-road. In order to prove their point, you may have seen it, I don't know if you have, they drove it all the way from the place that it was designed and built right to China. Uh, as a an experiment, really, I think, to show you what the car was capable of, it drove, Michelle, was it 16,000 miles? I believe it was. Kilometers. So, okay. <laughs> so it was, okay, it was 16,000 kilometers. Uh, I love my Toyota, but I don't think I want to take it on that trip. They took it through ice and mud and everything else. They really want to hammer the idea home that this is a car you can take anywhere. Clearly, we won't know how serious that is until we get to try it for ourselves, but it looked pretty impressive in the film that they showed us. Center console, well, as you'd expect, we've got plenty of space here. I like this little light here. That's nice if your passenger's looking for stuff while you're driving along at nighttime. And a second USB charge point. That's also helpful if you want to connect two phones up. Let's talk about the driving position a little bit. Well, it's not really going to surprise you to hear me say that the seats are very comfortable and I'm pretty sure that they would reward you over a longer drive. What is interesting about this car for me is the way that it makes you feel while driving it. I, I had the distinct impression when we spoke with Klaus Bischoff that they really wanted the front of this car to look aggressive. What's surprising to me is that that feeling is followed through into the interior. You feel that you dominate in this car. Now that's gonna work for some people, but I wonder if that could be a negative impact for others, I don't know. I really feel that I'm commanding the road, I'm commanding the car. Everything is laid out very much to tell me that I'm in charge. Well, that's a nice feeling in a nice person's hands. Not so much in some guys that you encounter, but still. Seating position is great. Seats, very, very adjustable. Steering wheel, is really nothing remarkable. We know and love this steering wheel from many, many other models. Feels nice to touch. It's very easy to navigate. I have controls right at hand. And obviously because the tech's been updated, the speech recognition is vastly improved. And that's going to be huge in the future. It's particularly important because the more and more that we advance these systems, the less and less that we're going to be wanting to touch them and we're going to be wanting to speak to them instead. We shouldn't be looking at this, we should be looking at that. So I'm really keen to see the way that that's integrated in the car as we test drive it. Now, Michelle pointed out something very interesting to me earlier and honestly, I would not have spotted it if he hadn't pointed it out. So credit where credit's due. This really nicely designed. And I say that because it not only looks great, it feels great too. This is brushed aluminium or if not aluminium, it certainly feels like it is. And this echoes the shape that you can see in the front bumper. So you have the styling reinforced. I like it because it feels high quality, but at the same time, there's attention to detail. Look at this orange trim line that runs the length of this strip. It's subtle, but it's still there. And it says, we were paying attention. Now, it's the glove box test. It's a big car. Can you put big things in its glove box? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no. So really, we've got some room for the driver's manual and a couple pens, and I guess that's about it. Well, you can't have everything. I will say if Michelle just slightly moves round to the door pockets, very happy to see that we have ample space there. So you can fit a nice big bottle of water there and also a little bit of clutter behind it. So I think I'm going to be able to get over my cloth box woes well enough after I've driven the car for a little bit. If we're going to be designing a premium SUV, clearly the backseat experience is very important. Now, a side note, just then before we were getting ready to shoot, Michelle was shouting instructions at me. He had his head in the car. I was the other side. I couldn't hear a word he was saying. So hopefully it wasn't that important. I think it was mostly about the functionality of the seats. But it's very pleasing to me to see how well this soundproofing has worked. I wonder if I can just show you, we have some background noise here. Quite what a difference it makes if I shut the door. Obviously we're not driving the car, but it makes me feel very positive about how that experience would go. So, as I said, I think it's important that the backseat experience 
resonates with that quality that you get from the front. And at first glance, it certainly does. Attention to details, nice. You remember me mentioning the angularity of the front design. Well, look at that. It's just echoed really nicely and subtly in both the speaker grille here and the door handle below. We have more of this aluminium brush trim with that subtle orange stripe built into it. And a nice detail here. Now, that's not really in your face or standing out. It just makes you feel good when you get into the car. Clearly, that's important. Let's take a look at my legs. Well, I don't really think you could possibly want more leg space than this. I have short legs, I will give you that. But I'm five foot 10, 178 centimeters. I have more than enough space back here. And headroom? Well, I guess not as much as I might like, but don't forget we have a panoramic roof and that does eat away at your inches slightly. I certainly have more than enough space to feel comfortable. And this roof is really quite something to experience from the back. Very nice indeed. We have net cargo pockets on the back of the seats. That fits the styling. I want to take this vehicle off-road, so this hard plastic back here is going to be very easy for me to keep clean and really delivers exactly what I want. I have dual controls in the back for heating and cooling. That's great. And as you can see here, clearly this is the top model, so we also have the ability to heat the seats. Now, slightly lower down, look at that. Well, you really can't argue with that, can you? Two USB charging points, a standard full voltage output socket, and a 12 volt beside here. That means if you have angry children with multiple appliances, they can charge them without bothering you at all. And I'm a big fan of that. Now, the thing that Michelle was shouting angrily at me at to explain is the way that these seats are so adjustable. So I'm going to show you that right now. Look at that. We can have an enormous amount of space, either forwards or backwards, depending on what we need to put in the back. And for an SUV, that's something I'm very much going to be looking for. I also really like the fact that for backseat passengers, look at that, I can adjust the rake on the seats. Okay, that's hardly groundbreaking. But you know what, it's a nice touch. Again, I want the premium experience to come into the back of this car and it does. Everything feels very nice indeed. Let's look at this middle section here. Well, okay, nothing's gonna change your world about that, but it's perfectly nice and functional. Michelle, they, he is a star, look at that, is wanting me to show you this. This is our access from the rear. We can get straight into that boot. So when we are going walking up Scarfell Pike, or what's a big hill in Germany? He's got no nothing, he's got nothing. There's no big hills in Germany. I seem to think you guys did quite well in the Olympics, skiing down big hills, no? Well, I'm not living in the mountains. Okay, fine. But, but way, it's, it's very hard locked. So if you want to unlock it, you have to pull the lever again. Okay, so uh, you probably couldn't catch that on the microphone. Michelle just explaining it's now locked in this position, which is nice because it's absolutely stationary. If you want that to move back, you have to pull the lever. Michelle's gonna help me out there and it goes straight back into place. I have to say, as rear seat experiences go, this is up there with the best of them. I feel really comfortable. I've got lots of space, lots of light, everything I need by way of amenities, and I don't feel like anything like a second-class passenger. Look at the door pockets. They're not an afterthought. I actually have enough space to keep things in there that I want to keep in there. So. I have to say, well done, Volkswagen. This is what I want in the back of a premium SUV. So we're back at the rear of the car again, and really what we want to talk about is towing to start off with. This car can tow up to three and a half tons, and that's significantly impressive. Why so much, you might say? Well, market research says that a really surprisingly high number of owners of this vehicle use it for towing. So Volkswagen listened, they made sure that you have the capacity to be able to do what you want to do. Well, that's not only gonna be towing stuff, it's also putting things in the back. So let's take a look and see what's happened there. Now the previous Tureg was no slouch in the back in terms of space, but I'm more than happy to say that this space has increased 
from 697 litres to 810, and that is a significant achievement. Yes, the car's a little bit wider, it's a little bit longer, but the way that the materials have been used and the way that the base has been optimised has allowed us to recognise all that extra space. And look at it, it's cavernous. If Michelle comes slightly higher up, you can see this. This is an optional electric parcel shelf. And what happens is, as you open the boot, this pulls itself up nicely out of the way. Eh, I don't know if that's necessary, but it's nice if you have it. Everything has been thought about in this car from the point of view of utility. Obviously, we have the ability to fold down rear seats from the rear. Not featured on every SUV, but I think an incredibly useful feature. Now, this is something else that Thomas has pointed out to me that I think is absolutely superb. Given that Volkswagen have identified the fact that many of the users of this vehicle use it to tow, they have integrated a facility to lower the suspension at the back to allow you to couple up the trailer without having any issues at all and then raise when you're done. We can't show you this on this car because obviously it's not uh, fully switched on, but I think that Thomas touched on that before. We have a 12 volt charging point back here as well. And really, it's very nicely finished indeed. Clearly you might think, okay, that looks great, but it's gonna get very messy. Well, you can get mats for that, as it will come as no surprise whatsoever. Underneath, well, you kind of have to respect them for what they've achieved here. <laughs> that is clearly a space-saving tire, and it is fully loaded with all the tools that you could want or you could need for the car. Slightly back and to the right, you can see the subwoofer for the base system. And there's actually a surprisingly pleasant amount of spare room back there. So if you want to keep your own tools in this car without compromising the boot, you're going to have room to do that. Well, I think you'd be hard pushed to have a problem with the way that the rear is finished. We have lots of nice features here that just make this easy to use without you having to be concerned about it, worried about it, or have any issue whatsoever. I even have just noticed that here we have a zero depth entry, and look at this. That just makes sure that the boot locking mechanism is kept out of your way while you're trying to slide in things that you've just bought or need to pick up. That's a really nice feature, and I think it speaks to the quality of the whole rest of the car. Let's take a look and see what's powering this thing. Okay, I just got to show the trick to this and I've already oh, lost it, there we go. Gas struts, well, look at that beast. You may or may not be aware, but diesel never really happened in China. So the big news for China going forwards is very much focused on electric, but also creating new and better petrol engines. So what you are looking at is the V6 TSI and that is going to produce 340 horsepower. Now, to start with in Europe, this car is initially gonna come with two V6 diesels, and they're gonna put out 231 and 286 horsepower respectively. But hold on, there's also a V8 turbo diesel coming up, 421 horsepower. But I think the big news story is going to be the plug-in hybrid that's coming, 367 horsepower of power, and that is going to be launched in China. It's also coming to Europe, but the date has yet to be announced. So it's pretty clear that Volkswagen broke their piggy bank for this event. We've had aerial acrobats, various Chinese luminaries presenting to us, and dancers galore. It was a very impressive production, but for us, it's all about the cars. Now, last year turned out to be a good year for Volkswagen. They experienced 4.2% growth globally but, and this is the important bit, 10% in China. So you can understand why the market is of significant importance to them. Now, they are very much enthusiastic to get on the tail of this growth in SUV demand that we have globally. And because of that, they say that they will have 12 SUVs in their lineup for the Chinese market by 2020. Tonight, because it's all about putting out a show for the Chinese customers, we have the full lineup of vehicles that not only exist right now, but that could potentially exist in the future. I think that you'll know what we're looking at. This is the T-Rock. It's obviously starting off at the smaller end of the scale. Coming through, this is really something that a lot of people will hope will make it through to production soon. We're gonna have to wait and find out on that. 
Obviously, we're looking at the Touareg in more detail. Further down the line, if Michelle pans around, you can also see our old friends down there. Now, we also have in the Asian market what is known as the Atlas in the States. But over here, it's known as the Terramont. There are currently three SUVs available in China. We have the Terramont. This is obviously the large, the Atlas. We have the Tiguan and we have the all new car that we're looking at tonight. So Volkswagen really presenting to us what they think the Chinese market is going for at the moment. Now we took a look, Michelle and I, at the Atlas in America and I have to say I was pretty impressed. In the Chinese market, a lot of it is to do with the space in the back. Spaciousness in the car is perceived as being incredibly important. And the reason for this is that a lot of the people who are buying these cars, if they can afford to buy the cars, have drivers to go with them as well. And because of that, the back seat experience is really, really important. And you can feel that in some of the larger vehicles. So Michelle's hands are killing him from all of my interviewing. So we have to keep this brief. I just wanted to have a quick word about brand loyalty. Now, a lot of our viewers wonder sometimes if we're in some way influenced about our reviews or how we approach our interviews when we have the opportunity to make them. I just wanted to address that and say in no way are we sycophants to the people that we talk to, but it doesn't help uh, for our future relationships or to be able to get you the information you need if we are aggressive and ask difficult questions. So we try to ask questions that will allow the people we're interviewing to give us as much information as possible and then you, the viewer, can read between the lines and make your own mind up as to what that means. But please understand, our most important objective is always to bring you the most objective opinions that we can. We have been lucky enough to be joined by Dr. Deese, and trust me, he is an extremely busy man at the moment, but also a very proud one. This is the first world premiere for Volkswagen ever in China. Yes, uh, for the Touareg, uh, you're right. It's the first uh, world premiere we are, we are doing here in China because uh, uh, China is very relevant. It's now uh, by far our biggest market. We sold 3.2 million cars last year. We are by far uh, the strongest brand in China. We are market leader since 30 years now. So this is kind of a home market for us. Uh, and uh, the, for, also for, the, for our top line cars like the Touareg, China was always uh, the most important market. And this is why we considered to launch the car here with our uh, really loyal customers, uh, which we have since many years and in a growing market environment. I think that makes sense and people are really enthusiastic to, to see the car here. So you're the market leader and that's an extremely stressful position to be in. It was very fascinating, the uh, presentation that we had earlier today where we saw three Chinese own brand manufacturers nipping at, at the heels of the top eight there. So obviously there's a, a big push on Volkswagen to really innovate and come up with new ideas. And you're really pushing the SUV growth and the brand model lineup coming into the future for China. Yeah. How do you see the public reacting to Volkswagen as a brand going forwards? You know, we are, we are perceived uh, not really as a, as a local brand, but kind of a local brand because we are here since so many years and so many generations of cars. We were basically the international brand which mobilized the, the Chinese people here. No? The, the same uh, what happened with the, with the Beetle in Europe no? in, in the 50s, 60s, happened in China uh, a few decades afterwards with the Santanas and with the Chetta. So many people have been brought up and, and their first car was a, was a Volkswagen Chetta or Volkswagen Santana. So we have a, a certain credibility over, over many years. We always stood for quality, for reliable cars uh, which people could uh, really afford and, 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 and have fun and, and enjoy in. And with the new lineup, I think we, we are, uh, the Chinese uh, industry is really getting stronger, no? And, and when it comes to product quality, design, or even marketing, they're really getting stronger. Uh, but we won't give up on it. No? I think we, we are investing in the brand here, we're bringing new product, we bring specific product for China, so we will defend our position. 
So one in every two cars sold by Volkswagen are sold in China currently. So this really, you, you couldn't possibly overstate the importance of this market. I'm really keen to know, have there been any big surprises for you in terms of vehicles released where you thought, well, we don't know how that will be taken by the Chinese public, but absolutely took off beyond your wildest expectations? Uh, you know, we, we, we have a few examples because um, we have very specific cars in our, our lineup. For instance, if, if you talk about the Golf, uh, by far our most important product in many parts of the world. But China is not really a hedge market, it's a sedan market. Now, to bring the Golf here was kind of a risky decision, but the Golf is very successful here. It's a much smaller segment, but we're selling 150,000 Golfs. The GTI is really an iconic car as well here in China. So this was kind of um, yeah, a positive uh, uh, experience. Uh, but there are many cars which at the end uh, are really uh, performing very, very well here in China. Just uh, recently we brought uh, the uh, car which is known in America as the Atlas, mm. the Terramont here, mm. which is a big car for mm. China. No? For America it's not such a big car, but for China it's a big car. And it's really basically sold out for this year, so people love this car. Uh, uh, it fits very well uh, here to China. Uh, also the Fideon, which is uh, kind of a car we don't sell uh, in, in other parts of the world. It's specific here, it's the size of an Audi A6 basically, you know, a little bit uh, uh, above the Passat. Uh, it's taking off nicely now, it's kind of our uh, premium car here in China, so this was also a positive uh, experience. Yeah? But there are also cars which is able to... Uh, why don't they sell more? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually personally genuinely very excited about the way that Volkswagen is looking at the electric future and it's really interesting to see the, the different way in which the Chinese government is managing to uh, make that an important agenda and really push the manufacturers to address this as an issue and force you to innovate. Is there something going forwards that you think you would love for the, the Chinese people to take to heart? You're not quite sure if they're ready for it, but you really want it to be in the Chinese market. I think we are really, we are listening uh, to, to what the Chinese government is thinking because they are, I think they're very strict regulators no? and they, they have a vision and a view and then they go there. So you can rely on the decisions which makes it relatively easy to follow, but they are very demanding. You know? they, are, they are forcing really high quota for electric cars. Uh, they are very demanding when it comes to the specifications of the cars. So it's, uh, it's not easy, but we are locally very strong. We have two big development teams in our uh, joint ventures, one more here in uh, Beijing. So our setup is, is really good. Uh, what's for us is, is quite uh, globally quite an advantage. We are strong in this market. Now this market will be the pioneering market for electric cars. And only to maintain our market share, we have to be able to produce here by 25 about 600,000 electric cars. That allows us to really bring here a lineup of electric cars, which we then can market worldwide and, and, and localize in, in other countries as well. So we, have, we see China as an opportunity for, for the brand to further develop and adopt to new technologies. Also, uh, as we have this NEV rules here where you have to uh, really provide plug-in hybrids and electric cars, uh, the Tiguan, which you don't, don't, didn't mention, comes here first and it's also world mm -hmm. premiere as a plug-in hybrid version uh, because the main market will be here in China. So China is, uh, uh, meanwhile, starting to drive automotive technology. So come on, we have you here. Last question, I know you're very, very busy. You have the opportunity, you have the incentive. Are we going to see the first all-electric Sirocco? That's what we want to know. <laughs> Come on, right, right here on camera. Come on. Uh, no, I can't comment on that. <laughs> well, I'm going to live in hope. I think I think there's every possibility we'll get to drive that. Hopefully Sirocco. sooner rather than later. Why do you love the Sirocco? Oh, because it's a, we, we a, a, a passion we, car. It, you know, it, car. it it really reminds you so much of your youth, of the yeah. excitement you felt the first time you got behind a, a car. And the Sirocco, for me personally, yeah. has always been, it's honestly, sir, <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a brand that Volkswagen haven't quite known how to evolve to yeah. the next generation. Yeah. And I'm really excited to see what can happen with this. And I think it has the potential once again to be groundbreaking. Honestly, I tend to agree. To <laughs> what you said, no, we probably now we have a Scirocco, which I think is a very competent car. 
and uh, we, we sold it quite nicely. We have a, a, a R version, which is really a performance car. Uh, but is it li really the essence for, of the of the first Chirocco? Probably not. No? This was a very lightweight uh, uh, kind of coupe uh, car, and uh, it's not so easy to maintain the spirits of, mm. of old cars. They're very very emotional. But what we are really committed to to bring forward the bu the bus, no, the electric bus, uh, which is a challenging project for us, uh, which will bring forward the the initial and and all the. Uh, the emotions tied to the to the initial buses uh, which we sold in the 60s or 70s. Well, I, I have to name drop him quickly. I have a very dear friend called Duncan who has a classic Sirocco sitting in his garage that he loves beyond all reason, all reason. And I know that he is waiting for an opportunity to should, update that. Forward some sketches on, on MEB based cars, so and we might consider. There you are, Duncan. You heard it first on Altica Fool. Thank you so much for your time. It's such a pleasure to see you and thank you, thank you for, for a wonderful evening. Thank you very much. We've been joined by the unflappable Jürgen Stackmann. Now I've, I've tried so many times. I'm gonna try again. Uh, thank you so much for tonight. It's been really yeah. an amazing experience. Tell me, what did you hope to achieve with tonight's event? I think just uh, to, re to really convey the message that Volkswagen is uh, seriously at home in this uh, country. We're not actually an exporter to China, nor actually this is a market. Uh, uh, this is the most important market for, for the Volkswagen brand. We're selling every second car here. Uh, we've now come to a stage where we are developing cars like this beautiful SUV behind me just for China. So uh, there's going to be, uh, I think, very prominently uh, visible on Chinese roads, but no nowhere else. And the message for tonight, actually, that Volkswagen uh, is, uh, is in full swing. Uh, we're, we, we see an, basically like, like an explosion of our portfolio. We are massively expanding the footprint into, into SUVs. Uh, and we, we, are, we are showing that the, the competence of the brand uh, is, is just moving from very stylish, very dynamic, very young at, uh, at heart to something uh, extremely, I would say, competent as, as the Touareg, which cl clearly is the crown jewel uh, of all of our SUVs. So a big range. Uh, I think big company uh, and I think a, a company with, with, with taste uh, and, and a company which has a very, very uh, strong plan. Now, we attended a very interesting presentation earlier on today which outlined for us the Chinese market and how you see Volkswagen moving into that into the future. One of the most interesting numbers for me was the average age of the Chinese customer, 35, and was it 40%? 60 percent first time buyer. Still. And in Germany, average age, mid-50s. Mid -50s. And you better believe they're not first-time buyers. <laughs> so I guess my, my question is, do you see something of a dichotomy in terms of making your brand present two images that in a way could be seen as being somewhat diametrically opposed? I don't think so. I think Volkswagen wouldn't be Volkswagen if it wouldn't be capable of actually absorbing exactly the stretch. Uh, Volkswagen is the people's brand. Uh, and it's the people's brand for a more mature uh, population that we have in Europe, that we have in Japan, even in North America, actually. Uh, we, we're serving the, the average household, which is uh, perfectly fine. It's, it's myself. No, it's basically we're creating cars for my age, my people, and younger. Uh, and here in China, you know, my age would be 35. Uh, the, the, the population is so young. We'll come on, you, come on. Actually. So, <laughs> no, no I don't. It's designing to, to your age profile and as, as, as some of your viewers and, 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 and followers. So, uh, I think the, 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 the strength of Volkswagen has been to really tailor to what is required locally. It's, it's, it's not one size fits all. It's actually a brand that has been able to capture the imagination of different generations in different places. Uh, I think the, the, the honest assessment is that the speed of, of development in here, in this country, is so fast that we need to adopt. Uh, uh, we, we talked about that basically we see new generation of customers coming in every five years. Different behavior, different uh, lifestyle completely different way of actually approaching buying uh, buying uh, uh, purchases and that's something we need to adopt to so if, uh, I'm, I'm a pretty senior guy in automotive <laughs> I'm still learning so much and I'm now learning most in China to be really honest it's, it's just a, a, a market like no other I told you the guy is unflappable so I've got one curveball question for you I don't think it's too bad um, I was personally very impressed to see earlier on in the presentation that the uh, CEO of Volkswagen China apologized 
to the the people for uh, what's happened with their their cars, and I I found that powerful. He had the stage, he had the presentation, and he took the opportunity to yeah. do that. That was a that was a brave move. Was that something that came from Volkswagen Germany or something that came from Volkswagen China? No, I think it's uh, Volkswagen China. Stefan is actually the head of our business here in in, in China. It's an, it's a natural. I think form of respect you show uh, here in China. Actually, it, it is a pretty minor problem, you would say, actually. We had a water leakage into the front of our current uh, tour rack in the country. Uh, but actu actually, it, it, be it became a serious notion and customers uh, were disappointed. It's, uh, it's important to, to apologize uh, in, the, in this country. And uh, I, I think we, we'll, we've learned that actually we need to show utmost respect to our customers in any form that actually is, is, is possible. And I think it was a great, uh, I would really have to say it was a great, great great moment uh, and it's a nice show very probably uh, sort of unexpected for many many of you as, as, yes. as being our journalists and guests but I think it's uh, important to say that we Volkswagen is, is, is really taking uh, sort of key concerns seriously and and uh, we use public stage to to, to address those well it, it worked for me and I, I hope that you guys felt that that was something if you had the chance to view the presentation that that really resonated with you too so let's get back onto cars oh, yes please tell me which car of the entire current SUV lineup does your heart belong to? It's so, so difficult. Uh, I, t I tell you, l last week I had the great opportunity to, to test drive our new Touareg from Berlin to Wolfsburg at home. It's a, it's a pure joy to, to drive this car. It's a really lux luxury in motion, a, a, a real perfect drive. I think that's, that's a car that will, will people, basically everybody who loves cars and loves driving will, will enjoy uh, Touareg. But uh, we've, we've chosen this one for our interview for a specific region. Uh, this is actually the sort of a compact SUV from our North Trend Venture. I think it's a, it is actually designed for China, but it's a world-class design. I think this car will appeal to many who see it uh, on the roads. And it's, it's a car that sort of I, I, I would have loved to present myself tonight, but actually obviously our Chinese partner sort of uh, takes the luxury f for, for that. It's, it's a very proud design. Uh, it sends a signal that Volkswagen knows how to do strong designs, but actually in a very Chinese way. And, and, and still you look at that and you think, wow, what a great car. Uh, uh, so very, very proud of this one. But to be really honest, I love all of them. So to our global viewers, we understand the, the Asian market is incredibly important and that's why we're here tonight. What do you have to say to your global audience, to the people who love and, and buy into your brand worldwide about how Volkswagen will be addressing their needs going forwards? Uh, I think we've, we've uh, touched on that in, in many of our interviews before, we, which we, we, we talk about regional uh, sort of approach, and that's something we're, I think, very well executing now. Uh, South American customers actually uh, have a very strong feel that we design our cars to their needs, what they love. Uh, we just started the journey in South America. There is so much more exciting work that uh, they will see from us uh, in, in just a short while. I think here in China, we, we are at home in this country. We understand, uh, I think, the genetic code mm -hmm. of our customers and the country. And you see this here with the beautiful cars on, on our hands. So Volkswagen would say Volkswagen. It's an approachable brand, uh, very strong quality, great technology, and, 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 and a taste that will resonate whether you're American, whether you're a Chinese customer, whether you're a South American customer, or a British customer, I think you will always find yourself in our work, and, and, and that is the, the, the beauty and the strength of the Volkswagen brand. Well, if this is a taste of the future, then I'm very excited by it, and I hope to see more models designed at 35-year-olds like Jürgen <laughs> in the future. Thank you so much for Thank taking the time to speak with us. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks. We have been joined by Klaus Bischoff, who I think is best described as a proud father tonight. Would that be a fair statement? Absolutely, absolutely. A lot of babies on stage here. You put in some extraordinary work. And personally and honestly, uh, I've been very impressed with the way that you've reimagined the design. The, the rounded looks have gone, angularities come in, sharpness of design and purpose. That was a very bold move. You, you must be feeling pretty happy with the outcome, I think. Uh, I truly am, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, when, when, you, when you see coming it all together and you see the new design language approaching, uh, then of course, very proud of my team and of the work they have, they have done there. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, I really don't think you can underestimate the amount of effort that this, this takes. Tell me, is there one vehicle in the lineup that you were particularly concerned you thought might be a challenge bringing this new styling to? Uh, yeah, they all had their challenges, yeah, of course. 
but the, the, the biggest challenge was to create this new uh, facial expression of the Touareg to combine uh, grill and headlights into a technical unit that is uh, totally innovative and new yeah, to, to work this into each other on such an amount of, of perfection is uh, and was truly a task. In some ways your job is incredibly enviable and in other ways not at all. You, you have to achieve the impossible when you approach th this as a fresh subject every time. Did you find that there were any particular things that you either had to compromise on or you were really excited about in terms of making the design fit specifically for the Asian market? Yeah, you know, we, we look at customers as a total. Of course, the Chinese market is a very uh, evolving and uh, developing market, yeah? and it's essential to understand the, the market. But you also have to, to think in general from the customer side. Yeah? That's what, what a designer needs to do. Create a design that embraces the customer, is sought out from the customer, and then gives a valid answer for the brand and for the customer, and by the way, solves a lot of functional issues. That's what I particularly like about the redesign. I think it answers a lot of those questions, and in particular, really puts the focus on the way that the car should be related to by the, the customer. It's, to me, it's much more emotional than the design that came before. But that's my take. I would love for you to show me a few things about this car that you are particularly excited about. Would, would that be okay? That would be absolutely okay. So then I would start with the facial expression. Uh, and if, if you uh, take a little bit more a distant view with the camera, you, you, you can see that we have a very enlarged, new, massive appearance in our Touareg. It's a very, very proud car. And when it, when it will show up in your rear mirror, yeah, when you are on the motorway or the autobahn, yeah, then I think you will immediately recognize not only that a Touareg is coming, yeah, so it's about personality, it's also a feeling that this design creates of dominance, uh, prestige, status, and power. That's I think he. That's what we aimed for. You heard it here first. Klaus Bischoff wants you to be frightened if you see one of these in the rear view mirror. Now, I think something that I find particularly exciting about the new lineup of SUVs is that you said when you launched the Arteon that there was going to be a similarity of design cues throughout the brand. And the Arteon is a beautiful looking car. And you ask yourself, but will that styling fit with the other the other cars in the lineup and it's really an interesting challenge to make that work and you absolutely have it's it's completely on key with the brand but the styling suits the car so are you going to tell me that was easy or are you going to tell me that proved to be a challenge that is of course and was a true true uh, challenge not not easy to achieve that absolutely not and every little uh, inch of the car is a lot of a lot of work yeah, to to bring this to this level of of perfection. Yeah, sure. Well, now I think that's something that our viewers in particular are really interested in. Can you please pick out a, a detail and just sort of talk us through exactly how that works, like how the decision making process works, how the design okay, works? I, I, I show you another uh, very attractive uh, feature of of the car, but therefore we have to go to the side and the back. Exciting, a moving shot. Off we go. So when, when, when you look along the side, you can recognize that the car has a very deep shoulder and it's very sculpted. Yeah? The wheel arches are pronounced, the wheels are enhanced in size. Yeah? So it's also about functionality, package. Yeah? You have to put a lot of, of energy into negotiating uh, a compromise and a solution. Yeah? So when you, when you look into the plan view of the car, you see that it's very deep yeah? and very precise, yeah, but it's aluminium. Yeah? So not easy to achieve this in aluminium. Yeah? And we have a very nicely detailed taillight with a, with a signature and LED that is very nice. 
Yeah? And also the flush design of the tailgate is giving the new Touareg uh, a truly unique presence on the road. So that's what we are aiming for. Yeah? Uh, show perfection and deepness in the design solutions and in every inch. Well, now you saved a lot of weight on this design because of material selection, and I think that uh, not least allowed you to go wider, longer, mm -hmm. and create more space without having a, a, a negative impact on the performance of this car. We, I should say I, always like to ask about the wheels. Haha, mm -hmm. -ha, I've got you finally. It's an off-road vehicle, so you can't tell me I need 20-inch wheels because it won't work. The optimum size of wheels for this car according to you, is? Uh, 21 inch. 21 inches, there you go. Except nothing less. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> One last question, your favorite feature of the car? Uh, it's the Innovision cockpit, of course. Uh, there we, we uh, go to revolution. Yeah? Uh, it's a truly awesome piece of technology that we put together there. Uh, it's 12 inch. Active info display under curved glass in combination with a 15 inch touch screen under curved glass made into uh, a unit yeah, that is uh, spanning through the uh, width of the dashboard in combination with an uh, uh, AC system that is perfected, uh, is delivering a totally new. Perfected, you hear that? Perfected. I have three children that may disagree with that statement, having driven through Italy in the middle of the summer with the air conditioning on a Sharan. <laughs> Perfected, the man says. So, you can rest assured if you need to take this car across Europe, you're going to be nice and cool. Not only that, it's also from the drivetrain uh, side, it's, it feels ultra compact. Yeah? On test rides, you, you have the feeling you're sitting in a car that is more compact yeah, due to uh, a lot of technical innovations that, that our engineers put into this product. So be surprised when you drive it, not only by the Innovision cockpit, yeah, also by the driving abilities and the safety systems. Well, you know, I think we were actually very pleasantly surprised when this car first became available that so much of the T-Prime had been kept, which is, as you know, so unusual for concept cars because we all go to Geneva and we look mm -hmm. at the cars and we say, yeah, okay, that's great, but really. And in terms of the interior and the way it functions, mm -hmm. it's really quite impressive how much of that original concept has been kept. Did you, did you fight hard for that? Uh, it looks like that. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. I, th I, think, I think that's as, <laughs> as good of an answer as we're going to get on that one. Thank you so much for your time. It's been a, a real pleasure to talk to you, and I hope very much we're going to get the opportunity to try out your hard work in person very soon. Thank you. So, the Touareg in Beijing, China, what do we think? Well, you've all heard the expression, go big or go home. I think at this stage, being number one market leader in China, Volkswagen really had to make a statement. And to me, this car does that. It really punches above its weight from previous models. That's not to knock the previous models. This is the third iteration of the Touareg and they've already sold somewhere in the region of three million units over the time in which it's been in production. So there are big hopes for this car. I think it pushes all the right buttons. It says class, it says quality, and if it delivers as much in terms of the off-road driving experience as Volkswagen has promised us, I think it's a really big contender for the market. Will it be right for the Chinese people? Well, according to the numbers, it will. SUVs are in astronomical growth over here, and they really like bigger, smarter, better. So I think this is very definitely a step in the right direction for Volkswagen. Me personally, I'm more than excited to see how the hybrid's gonna perform when that becomes available, but I guess we're just gonna have to wait a little while before that happens. Until then, if you have any questions or any comments, please put them below, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye from us in Beijing, and we hope we'll see you again soon.